I fixed this TV about one year ago because it lost the picture and the sound at the same time so I baked the motherboard inside the oven and it worked great up until today and now I have a different problem while the sound is steady the picture is not the video stream is very distorted the picture jumps up and down to the sides and sometimes there is no picture at all all I see is a black screen while the sound is present this seems like a connection or connectivity problem so let's try to fix it again I removed the back panel from the TV and that's how plasma TV looks like on the inside if you have LED LCD TV it would be less complicated than this but you can follow the troubleshooting steps as I do first you want to make sure that all the ribbon cables are solidly connected by unplugging it and plugging it right back in you can use your fingernail to unhook that plastic tab remove the cable look at the shiny connectors and make sure there is no rust or oxidation on them preventing a good connection stick the cable inside just make sure it sits straight and then lock the plastic tab in its place do this on every wire that you see to rule out a bad wire connection on the wider ribbon connectors it's better to use two fingernails at the same time so you don't break the plastic latch this connector is squeeze and pull on both sides and this LVDS cable is very important because it transfers the signal from the main video processing chip to the control board which distributes that video signal throughout the next thing you want to make sure that all of the grounding screws are firmly attached to all of the boards because if just one screw goes loose it will create all kinds of weird problems for you next you want to check all the electrolytic capacitors and make sure none of them is bulging or even wet with liquid and if you see something that looks like an expired can of tuna ready to blow the top off you probably found your problem the next test you can do with almost any kind of multimeter but only if you're comfortable working with electricity because you have to plug your TV into electrical outlet and turn it on with the TV on and electricity flowing through all of the wires attach the black lid to the grounding screw like this or anywhere on unpainted metal chassis and here is a convenient place for a grounding screw which can hold the black lid inside if you have a multimeter like this switch it to volts but if you have to choose a range on a different multimeter choose volts DC above 200 and this test is for plasma TVs only first I need to make sure that this power board in the middle converts and supplies enough electricity to the right video sustain board to find out how much electricity it requires look at the sticker on your TV for VS voltage 201 volts in my case look at this connector and it should say VS somewhere on those pins and you should be able to see two VS pins on the right side with the red lead touch one of those pins and see what it says and I get the proper 201 volts so the right side is good now check the left side for proper voltage once again find VS pin on left connector and connect your red lead and I get 201 volts as well there is another voltage check that you can do which is supplying voltage to the bottom video boards and it's going through this wire this voltage is called VA and it should be on your sticker as well mine is 60 volts so find VA pins on this connector and attach your red lead to one of them and I get 60 volts DC and now I know that this TV has a steady power supply which means I need to look for some other problem and the next logic step would be the logic board right in the middle sometimes it's called the control board logic controller or TCON board on LCDs LED panels and it would be located on the very top or very bottom of your TV this logic board may be misfiring the video signal due to a loose connection of one of the chips on the board so I will try to reheat this board just enough for the solder to melt and hopefully re-establish connection once it's cooled down the solder used in electronics typically melts at about 385 degrees Fahrenheit 
which is about 200 in Celsius. So I'll make a sandwich inside this oven consisting of piece of foil, cardboard, logic board, heat resistant paper to prevent shorting out any of the component, and another piece of foil to prevent plastic parts on the board from melting. Now I will set the temperature right below 400 degrees or 200 in Celsius and set the timer for about 10 minutes without preheating because it's a small oven and heats up pretty quickly. 10 minutes later, let's see what happens. The last time when I baked a different board, some of the plastic parts have melted because the heating element in the small oven is so close to the board and that's why I decided to cover it with piece of foil. And now I can see some burn marks on the parchment paper, but the board doesn't show any visual damage. I will let the logic controller board to cool down for about 30 minutes and then put it back in the TV. Replace all the wire connectors, but make sure they go in straight before you lock them in. After all of those wires are connected, I'll plug in the TV and it didn't work for me. So as much as I didn't want to bake the motherboard for a second time, I feel like I had no choice, either bake it or replace it. And this time I covered it with a parchment paper and piece of foil as well. While the paper shows some burnout marks, let's see what happened to the plastic parts on the board. And I don't see any additional damage to the plastic parts, besides the damage that I've done last year by baking it without the cover. And that's good because I don't want to put any extra money into this TV because it's old and the screen has permanent vertical lines which cannot be fixed. Plug in the power, the cable TV, turn it on and let's see what happens. And the picture is back. I'm sure this is not a permanent fix, but if I can get another year out of it, I'll be happy. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button and thanks for watching.